I want to teach you guys how to make your own watercolor blocks. If you don't know what that even is, and you don't even know that you need this in your life, let me tell you about it. A block of paper is where, it's where the whole pad of paper is glued on the edges, except for one corner. That's the only corner that is not glued, and that's so you can stick a palette knife up underneath there and get it off. Now, the reason this is so wonderful, whether you're working in a medium that's water soluble, so acrylic, watercolor, gouache, even if you're working with pastels, like oil pastels, having a block is really wonderful because the oil pastels, even though they're not real wet, they still will buckle. Let me show you the difference. So here's an oil pastel I did yesterday on a block. You can see the corner that is not glued down. This is one that I made myself. Look how nice and smooth it is. Here's one that's not on a block and you can tell how warped it is. There's also something nice about just the heaviness, the weightiness of the block that keeps it on the table for you from moving. But block pads are far more expensive than just a regular pad of paper. So this is what you do. You buy a regular pad of paper. So this I got for, I think it was about $20, maybe like 19. And this has, it has 50 pieces of paper. A watercolor block only has about like 20 or 25 pages, 20 sheets only 20 sheets and the same size like a block versus a pad is going to be the same amount of money but you get more than double the amount of pages if you buy just a pad of paper and not the block but you can make your own block it's really amazing i learned this all the way back from when i was little my dad owned a printing company and he had all kinds of like fun things for me to do when he had to work on weekends and i would be there with him and one of them was to make pads of paper and we had this pink glue stuff that we would paint on the top top part of like pressed together paper. And I was thinking about that one day thinking, I wonder if I can still like get my hands on some of that glue because I can make my own pads, my own blocks, watercolor blocks. Well, they have it. I wish it was pink. I, you probably can get it like in the red or pink still. This is just clear, which is fine, but there's kind of like a memorabilia thing for me or what's it called when you're like, you have fond memories or something. Anyways, okay, let's stay on task here. This is a pad book compound. It's not very expensive. It says main use adhesive for binding pads and books. Exactly what we're doing. It's so simple. So I have two pads I'm gonna make into blocks and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, this is when you need to get like your big books, your art books out and anything heavy. I'm gonna also use some like, these are boards to paint on. You want something that's literally just a tiny bit bigger on both sides that overlaps just the tiniest bit because what we're gonna do is sandwich I'm gonna take my pad then I'm gonna put the next board on top we have like a little sandwich going on here and now I'm gonna take some books you could take clamps actually oops I forgot about a stage hold on let's go get I went and got some tape because I forgot that I always forget to glue one of the corners so let's tape off one of the corners will also kind of work as like a little clamp. You don't have to have leave a ton, but you just want, you know, one corner. It's basically an inch or two. That would be, yeah, that's gonna work perfect. Okay, so there's our corner. Now we're gonna put our other board on top. And this is when big heavy books come in play. So you could use clamps, but I think this right here is gonna work really well. You just want it good and smushed. So basically we don't want, oh yeah, see? See, I've got this, I need something to press down. I think I'm gonna, yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna go grab my clamps, and clamp that sucker down, and then we'll just brush on the glue. Here's the setup I decided to go with. I clamped it because this one was a little wonky and I was getting some space. I'm still getting a little bit of space down there, but who cares? Because my clamps were like sticking out, I put it up on these and now we're just gonna paint our glue on. It just doesn't have to be perfect, you know? It's just enough to like keep things glued together. Then I've got a paintbrush here that's not ginormous. It's one I don't mind messing up, but I'm not gonna mess it up because I'm gonna clean it good after. What you'll do, just get a little bit of glue and go in here to this crack. And I'm probably gonna get glue over everything since I'm trying to film. You just wanna make sure you get way up, up in there. 
just get a nice coating over the whole thing. Yeah, look, I'm getting glue everywhere. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go finish this. You really just like swap it on. There's nothing special. Thing is, if you miss like a spot, it's just really not a big deal. Since I'm filming and trying to do this, I may, I may do two coats. Yeah, you will get this on your books if you use a book. Cause I'm getting it all over this plastic stuff. And this stuff dries really fast. I usually leave it overnight, but maybe I'll read the directions because I can't remember how long it takes to dry. It's the next day. I've left this for 24 hours. My little board here may have stuck a little. Yep. Okay. This is what you do because you know the glue, this may have stuck a little. So what you do is just take, just gonna take a palette knife and just run it across. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that. That actually came off really nice. It's kind of like that rubber cement glue. It's not, you know, it just kind of is springy. It's, it's exactly what they use to bind like the top here. I'm gonna pull this off. Take my corner off. And now I have a block of paper. It's all glued together except for our one corner right here. I'm going to go gesso this up so I'll be ready for painting. Something I forgot to mention with the watercolor blocks or the whatever kind of paper you use for your block, when you have wet paint on it, it will kind of buckle. But what happens is when it dries, it literally pulls taut and is flat as board. So if you're using it, you're like, oh no, this isn't working. That's why it's just that it does kind of buckle a tiny bit. Let me show you, I'm gessoing it and you can kind of see it. Can you see the waves a little bit? Yeah. You can maybe you can kind of see how it's a little but when it dries it will be taut as can be Okay, that's how you do it. Use your palette knife or even just your finger and pull it right on off. I hope that was helpful and a game changer for you. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to try it. <laughs>